Well, today we're continuing our series we've called The Blessing. And the blessing is just simply uh, unconditional love and acceptance communicated. Unconditional love and acceptance communicated. And so we've been talking for several weeks now about uh, what are the elements of the blessing throughout the Bible. You can see generally there are five elements of the blessing, and we'll put them up for you to see. Meaningful touch, a spoken message, communicating high value, picturing a God-designed future, and a genuine commitment to fulfill the blessing. Now, I want you just to look at those this morning and ask yourself the question, are there one or two of those or more of those that you may have been missing in your family growing up? Were all five of those present? Or maybe for some of you, you say, hey, I already know. Like I had a really dysfunctional family and I doubt any of those are there. Meaningful touch, a spoken message. In other words, uh, not the idea that, well, my family knows I love them, so I don't have to say it. Not that. Were, were words of unconditional love and acceptance spoken? And then um, uh, uh, communicating high value. In other words, um, it was communicated to you, not only that you are valuable, but why, why you're valuable. And then picturing a God-designed future, did anybody ever say to you, did someone regularly say to you, God has a plan for your life, and I could see how God could use you in the future based on the gifts and strengths he's put in you. And then a genuine commitment, or as Pastor Mark said last week, an active commitment, an ongoing, regular commitment, not just to talk, but to do action and say, I'm committed to you, to you becoming everything God wants you to be. And I, and I will do everything in my power to make that happen. So look at those and ask yourself the question this morning, were some of those, one of those missing? And I do want you to know, um, one of the concerns that I've had during, during this series is you might look at those and say, well, it doesn't, yes, I was missing one, yes, I was missing two, yes, I was missing one, but it doesn't matter because that was a long time ago. I, I, I got over it. How did you get over it? What process did you go through to get over it? Surely not just because it was a long time ago, because time doesn't heal. Did you know that? Time doesn't cure. Time just separates you from the event or the wound or the pain or the lack, but it doesn't do anything inherently to heal. The, the, lack, the lack of blessing is a serious thing to have missing in your life. And here's what I want to say to you after, you know, being a pastor for a few decades. I am regularly amazed how connected a missing piece or pieces of the blessing are to present day life. I've been amazed how it affects my life, and I've been amazed how it affects people who have missed something and have lived for years and years completely unaware. And somewhere in prayer or somewhere in conversation with another believer or somewhere in counseling, it comes out and they say, do you think this has anything to do with that? You say, yes. This has everything to do with that. With that part that you were missing. The blessing matters because without it, we act out, we play the victim, we become perfectionists, we become workaholics, we drown in guilt and insecurity, uh, we have a compulsive need sometimes to help other people, we battle with fear and shame, and we become control freaks. <laughs> Nobody like that here today, right? Right. The blessing affects all relationships. It affects your marriage, it affects your parenting, it affects your grandparenting, it affects your friendships, it affects your relationship with God. It's, it's very difficult to even have a proper view of God when you are missing pieces of the blessing. So the blessing is not a luxury. It's a deep need inside your soul. That's been my big concern the whole time is just to say, that would have been nice to have that, but I didn't have that, and it's okay. I want you to know it's not okay. And it's not going to be okay unless you, you embrace a way to process through what you're missing. Now this morning I want to look at an event in King David's life which I think really gives us a good picture of how you and I might deal with 
missing pieces of the blessing. So if you were missing part of the blessing or all of the blessing, let's look at this event in David's life and see how we might deal with it. What do you do when you're missing the blessing? Well, uh, before we read the story, uh, David, you might know the story. David committed adultery with a woman named Bathsheba. And from the affair, a child was conceived. And um, David's sin was not overlooked by God. He sent Nathan the prophet to confront David. And one of the consequences of David's sin was that the child died. The child that was conceived from this affair died. Now, these are very different circumstances that you and I are dealing with in a missing part of the blessing. So I don't want to confuse those. David's, uh, David's loss was directly connected to his own sin. But here's what I want to say to you, and I want you to hear this this morning. If you're missing part of the blessing, it's never your fault. Every child of divorce at some point in their life says, had I had better grades, kept my room cleaner, been a better kid, my parents wouldn't have divorced. Now, we get older, and intellectually, we know better than that. But it seeps into the groundwater of our soul and our emotions. And it affects the kind of adult we become, the guilt or shame or whatever we, whatever we embrace, the perfectionism. Because emotionally we believe, had I been a better child, my parents would not have divorced. But you, we all know intellectually, it can never be the child's fault, right? Well, that's what we're talking about in the blessing. If you were missing part of the blessing, what happened to David was David's fault. If you're missing part of the blessing, it cannot be your fault, but loss is loss and healing is healing. And so what I'm looking for this morning in this story are not the, are not the differences, but the similarities, okay? So David was missing his son. You and I might be missing part of the blessing. So what do we do? 2 Samuel chapter 12, 16 and 17, David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and spent the nights lying in sackcloth on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him to get him up from the ground, but he refused and he would not eat any food. David fasted for seven days. He lied on the ground. He prayed intensely for seven days. So this gives us a picture of what you and I can do when we're missing part of the blessing. If you're taking notes this morning, let me give you four things that you and I can do when we're missing part or all of the blessing, number one, we have to grieve. We have to grieve what we're missing. We have to grieve what we're missing. What grieving is, is, is a, it's a way to look inside our own soul and process loss. How much damage has this loss done to me? And here's what I find about grieving. Grieving is a, is a tricky thing. Uh, Grieving is kind of how we misperceive time sometimes. Grieving usually takes longer than the griever thinks it does. And I've been amazed by that in my life and in other people's life, how we say, man, I feel like I should be over this by now. And you say, well, you know, the event was a week ago or two weeks ago or a month ago. Legitimate grieving can take months. It can even take a few years depending on the event. But it has to be processed through, and that's what David is doing. David is processing the loss. And so in order for you and I to ever heal, when we realize we have this missing part of the blessing, the only way you and I can ever heal over that is we must do intense, honest reflection. And let's be honest about it this morning. That's something most of us avoid. Looking directly in the mirror and staring at it until we allow the Holy Spirit to probe our soul and say, there. And we say, ow, don't touch there. That's sore. That's sensitive. We don't talk about that. That hurts. But until under God's grace, you allow him to touch there, you can't grieve what caused the wound. So to heal, you must do intense, honest reflection. Now here's what I've learned about grieving. If you grieve well, you will not hurt forever. If you don't grieve well, you will hurt forever. And when you hurt, you hurt others. And so you have to go through the process. 2 Samuel chapter 12, look at 19. Let's follow the story with David. David noticed that his attendants were whispering among themselves, and he realized the child was dead. 
Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied, he is dead. Then David got up from the ground. After he washed, put on lotions and changed his clothes. Pay attention to that. He changed his clothes. He went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went to his own house, and at his request, they served food, and he ate it. So here's the second thought. We have to grieve what we're missing. Number two, we have to worship God. So in other words, David washed. He changed his clothes. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what grieving clothes look like and worship clothes look like, but apparently he had two outfits. One was for grieving and one was for worshiping. I don't know. I hope you brought your worship outfit this morning. I, I don't know what you brought with you, but I hope that's what you're wearing. But he changed clothes, and for him that was a sign that he was going to change his focus from grieving to worshiping. See, grieving is a self-centered activity. Now, that doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means the attention is put inside on yourself. And that's appropriate for a time. But there has to come a time where you take your grieving clothes off and you put your worship clothes on because it'll become harmful if you get stuck there and you stay in it too long. Somewhere along the way, we have to shift our focus. We have to move our eyes past the shadows of the past and put them on the light of God's goodness. Missing something. Missing something. Here's how that, here's how that looks. Because you missed a part of the blessing, because you lost something you shouldn't have lost, because something happened that shouldn't have happened, because a parent did not do something they should have done for you, is a reality. But let me tell you something, it does not change in, one, in one, any sense of the word who God is. And that's what that worship looked like. That worship says, I acknowledge what I lost, but you know what? God, you're still mighty. You're still on the throne. You're still awesome. You're still all-powerful. You're still a good father regardless of what happened or did not happen to me. It hasn't changed you at all. And that's what it looks like to shift and to put your worship clothes on. Number three, then you have to transfer your unmet needs. So maybe you're watching online or maybe you're here today and you say, you know, I, I, I didn't have a dad. Or my mom was, you know, uh, harmful to me. Or I come from a dysfunctional family. We could, we could spend all day, you know, going through the possible scenarios that have happened. And maybe you're thinking, how can I be a good dad? I didn't even have a dad. Or I didn't have a good dad. How can I be a good mom? I, I didn't, my mom was broken. My marriage is doomed. Both of our parents are divorced. What, what chance do we have? I come from a long line of, of addicts in my family. What chance do I have? What do you do when you have this legitimate need to be blessed and you weren't? What, what, how do you move forward? What can you do? Here's the deal. You have to transfer the unmet need from the person who should have given it to you. Mom or dad, parents, whoever it was, should have given it to you and didn't. You have to transfer that unmet need from them to God. Now let me tell you why to God. Because God is able to meet every need in your life, even the ones that your parents should have given you and didn't. And let me give you some scripture this morning that will encourage you. You ready? Philippians 4, 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. There's no bankruptcy in heaven. There's no stimulus plan. There's no debt. There's no mortgage. Everything in heaven's paid for. Debt free. He has a bank you never even touched. And let me tell you, according to his riches and glory in Christ, the riches that are in glory in Christ, he's able to meet your need, even what you're missing. Ephesians 1, 3, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with what? Every spirit, all of them. All of them. Every spiritual blessing. 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given, given us, say the word with me, 
everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who's called us by His own glory. God is completely able to surround you with every blessing that you missed from wherever you missed it. My God shall supply all my needs. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a husband to the widow. He's a parent to the orphan. He's a comfort to the lonely. He's a friend to the friendless. He can meet everything you're missing. Now, here's what you've got to decide in your mind. Either God's enough or he's not. And if he's not enough, you got no hope. But if he's enough, then at some point you have to start taking steps toward him and you have to start living like it and you have to start acting like it and you have to start talking like it and you have to start moving toward him and say, my God shall supply all of my needs. He's going to fill in every hole. So either God is enough or he he isn't. So how do you transfer? This is good preaching, but how do you really do it, right? Sunday's good. What about Monday? How do you transfer the unmet need, when, when, like a house of cards, your emotions caves in on you. And you say, here I am again. How do you transfer? Here's how you do it. You have to acknowledge what you did not have. Okay? You have to say, you have to square up with, okay, my dad, my mom, whatever, my parent, whatever it is. I, I was missing this in my life. And oftentimes you recognize it when you look around at other people and you see that they have it. Say, I wish I'd have had a mom like that, or I wish I'd have had a dad like that, or whatever. But you have to acknowledge and say, okay, I did not, I did not have that. It's very hard for God to meet a need of yours that you don't know you have. So you have to acknowledge, I did not have this. Then, here's one of the key pieces, you have to release... That person, that parent, that mom, that dad, that whoever, that grandparent, you have to release them from the responsibility to meet that need. Because either they're, either they're unwilling or incapable. Maybe they're not even alive anymore. Maybe they're gone. But for whatever reason, that need's not going to be met by them. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to release their responsibility and say, I, I release them. I'm not going to expect. We unconsciously expect people who should, who've been given the responsibility by God to bless us to do it. And when they don't do it, we don't realize it, but we kind of, we kind of, there's a tension because we're expecting something from them that they're never going to give. And what you have to do is you have to release and say, I, I, I let them go. I'm not going to expect it anymore. I'm not going to be disappointed when they don't do it because I've, I've let go. So you acknowledge, you, you release. Now watch this. Now you transfer that need to God. And you say, God, I'm going to expect you now. I'm going to look to you, the author and the finisher of my faith, to add now to my life the parts of the blessing that I never got. I'm going to look to you to do it. How many times do you have to do that? <laughs> until you believe it. <laughs> until you believe it. Because let me tell you, it's not a magic wand. You're not going to do it one time, and all of a sudden, years of dysfunctional patterns and memories and thoughts and neglect and whatever is just going to wash away. You're going to have to do it again and again and again and again. My God shall meet all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You have to do it again and again and again because you're training yourself to walk in the blessing. You're training yourself to act like an adopted son or daughter of Jesus Christ and not like a son or daughter of whoever else you were a son or daughter of, but you're, you're walking toward a new reality. And it's not just going to land on you. It's not just a switch that you've left. It's not a button that you push. It's going to take time. But let me tell you something else that God will do. God will bring other people in your life who will bless you. And they don't even have to. They, don't even have, they haven't even been given necessarily the direct responsibility from God to do it because God's good and God's people are good. It'll happen. 
And they, they will never be a replacement for your mom or dad or grandparents, whoever, but they will be grandmotherly and grandfatherly, and they will be fatherly and motherly and sisters and brothers and friends and pastors and leaders and life group leaders and teachers and kids, kids pastors, and they will run summer camps, and, they will, and they'll surround you, and they'll say things to you that maybe the people who should have didn't. And they'll look at you and say, God's got a plan for your life. And listen to the echo and the testimony of the people of God around you, radiating inside your soul. You are blessed. You are a blessed son or daughter of God. I I can't tell you the number of times that's happened in my life. Four churches uh, that we've served in, and in all four of those churches, God has brought people into our life that have filled gaps for us, that have become family-like and have spoken things and said things and communicated things that blessed us and encouraged us and shaped us. And from, from the family of God, we've risen to become the people that we are because God has surrounded us through our years with blessing. As a matter of fact, when I was a young pastor, um, a, an older pastor took me under his wing And taught me so many things. And do you know one of the things he taught me? He taught me what I'm teaching you this morning. He was a counselor and he looked at me and he said, When you're missing something that God intended for you to have, you have to transfer the loss of that need. This is in about 1996 he said this to me. You got to transfer the loss of that need and you got to look to God. You got to let them go and you got to look to God and you got to receive from Him. God sent that man into my life to tell me that because I needed it. I needed it because I would be talking to people who needed it. But I needed it because I needed it. And that's what God does. God surrounds us. So here's the last thought, number four. Give the blessing to others. Give the blessing to others. David changed clothes. He worshipped. He ate at home. He went and saw his wife, in the biblical sense he saw her, and they conceived a child. And do you know what that child's name was? Solomon. King Solomon. What, what, what is that? In the same chapter, you don't have to look very far ahead in the story. What, what, do, we, what do we see in David's life? He grieved. He worshiped, he let go, and then he began to focus on those who God put around him, and he blessed them, and he blessed them, and he invested in them, and he encouraged them. You have to let go at some point and focus on the people that God put in your life now, and you have to bless them because at some point, this life does this trick to us. At some point, and nobody knows when, it's not when you vote, it's not when you get your license, it's not when you turn 21, it's not any of that. I don't even know when it is. But there's this little magic line we all cross one day. Where we come from the person who says, why did I not have this part of the blessing? And somewhere overnight we blink And we look around and there are other people looking at us and saying, why won't you bless me? And if you spend your whole life wondering and dealing with why wasn't I blessed, what you're going to miss is an opportunity to bless those who are around you. Brothers and sisters and children and grandchildren and all of that. And that's what God's called you to do. To receive the blessing He has for you and then to bless your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, those in your life. Yesterday, we uh, celebrated such an incredible event. Uh, Jeremy Sims, our worship and youth pastor, and uh, Hannah were married here yesterday, right here. And it was such an incredible moment. It's a long story. If you know it, you know it. But I was so moved when I watched Jeremy's dad 
stand right here. And he spoke a blessing over Jeremy and Hannah. And I I was so moved. I was so moved. It was such a beautiful blessing he spoke over him. And then he actually invited the entire family and everybody that was there. He said, would you just stretch your hands toward them and would you just pray a blessing over them? And can I tell you, when I saw him do that, something welled up inside my heart. If you didn't see it, it's on Facebook. You, you could go back. It'd be worth going back and just watching that one part. Something welled up in my heart and said, now this is God's will for everybody. This is what God wants for everybody to be blessed. And so you and I have the opportunity to give the blessing. And we should give the blessing. It's what God wants us to do. But we can't give what we don't have. And so the first thing we have to do is to um, receive the blessing from God if we're missing it. So I've got a challenge for you. You ready? i got a challenge for you this week. I want to uh, challenge you to ask your spouse, ask your kids, ask your grandchildren. Show them this list. We'll put it here. Show us this list. Show them the list. And I want you to look them in the eye and I want you to say, would you tell me which one or ones of these that you think I've done the best job in blessing you with? Which, which ones have I done real good at? And, and listen, now here's the hard part. Then ask them, can you see one or two of them that you think I haven't done as well at? Would you tell me, would you tell me which one those are? Hey, I got news for you. They already know. They just haven't told you. They already know. I did that. I did it this week. I sat down with my kids and I said, would you tell me? I'd like to know. It's eye-opening. It's a little nerve-wracking because you're thinking, I I don't know. How's this going to go? And then when you when you find the ones that you've done well at, say, yay, celebrate. And when you find one that you haven't done as well at, just say, God, would you help me? I want to leave no doubt in any of my loved one's life that I love them and I bless them. I don't want to leave no doubt. And God, would you help me do that? You know, I pray that God would heal all your hurts. Pray to heal every one of them. I pray that you would receive from Him every piece of the blessing you've been missing. And I pray that you would never leave a doubt in any one of your your spouse or your kids or your grandkids or your loved one's mind that you absolutely unconditionally love and unconditionally accept them. That's what I pray for you today. Would you stand with me this morning? And if you're online, our prayer team is there ready to pray with you. Would you just close your eyes and, and open your heart for a moment? As we pray today, I just want you to ask yourself the question, is there an element of the blessing that I'm missing? Is there an element of the blessing that I'm missing? I want to say it to you one more time again today. My God shall supply all of your needs according to His glory and riches in Christ Jesus. If you need prayer, you're online right now, would you just drop in the comment section and say, I need God to bless me. That's all you have to say. I need the blessing. I need God's blessing. I need God to bless me today. If you're here in the room with us, would you just, with your eyes closed, if you say, you know what, today I acknowledge that part of the blessing is missing in my life. And I need God's blessing on my life today. With no one looking, would you just lift your hand and say, would you pray for me today? Just pray with me and pray for me. Just lift your hand. I see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. The hands all over the room and from every age, <laughs> from the oldest to the youngest. I just want to pray for you today. Would you just walk through this prayer with me, everybody? Today I acknowledge that I did not receive every part of the blessing. 
And today I release those from whom the blessing should have come. And today I transfer the meeting of that need to God the Father through Jesus Christ. And today I receive the blessing that's mine as an adopted son or daughter of Jesus Christ. Lord, today we thank you for your blessing. We thank you that you've blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for your work and your grace. We thank you for peace and favor today. And today we celebrate the work you're doing in our life. In Jesus' name. We're going to sing a song.